Over the years, as more and more shows have made their ways to mainstream media, there have been countless techniques and special moves that these characters do that captivate people of all ages. Dragon Ball has the obvious Kamehameha, My Hero with the United States of Smash, Bleach has Ichigo's Getsuga Tenshou, and so on, so forth. And just like all these shows, Naruto has its own power system and a world of fantastical techniques. From creating giant ethereal bodies that loom over mountains to black flames that are said to eternally burn until the target is distinguished. So many awesome abilities, but if it were possible to do any of these, what techniques would be the most useful? Sure, don't get me wrong, it would be cool to be able to open up gates within my own body to be able to have godlike strength and speed for a bit, but what good is that doing me in my daily life? No. Today, I want to talk about the five jutsu that I think would be best suited to make everyday life better. Or mine, at the very least. And if you like video concepts like this and want to see more in the future, make sure to hit the like button down below for me, that way the algorithm knows that you want to see more of my delicious content. Make sure you are subscribed, that way you know when each and every single one of my videos comes out. Let's get back into it. Before getting into the list, I actually want to start with some of my honorable mentions. Now, obviously creation of all things is the most useful technique available, but it's so rare and broken that it's best to leave out of the list in my opinion. It would definitely change the world, but isn't very interesting for the sake of our list. Other mentions would be Kamui. Any version of Kamui is extremely useful, as a pocket dimension is never a bad thing, but I also wanted to stay away from ocular jutsu as they are typically the most popular and therefore have been talked into the ground. For the same reason, we'll also be adding Koto Amatsu Kami to this list as well. Another obviously broken jutsu with implications of changing the world however the user sees fit. Once again, very powerful, but very boring in my opinion. And lastly for honorable mentions is Tak no Jutsu. Now, I don't need to say much about this as the memes speak for themselves, but let's be very, very real here. As much as people tend to make fun of it, Naruto's words do tend to ring through making this jutsu very useful in the hands of the right person. Okay, let's get onto the list. Starting off, we have what is probably the most popular choice, the Shadow Clone Jutsu. From the start of the series when Naruto created hundreds of clones in order to protect his figurative older brother from all the way up to his specialized training with Kakashi, I always thought this technique was cool, but the average Joe like me would have no use for something like this as I probably would only have an average amount of chakra. However, after Kakashi revealed his special training methods to Naruto, showing that the original bodies keep the memories and experience of the clones they create after they've disappeared, immediately made this a top tier technique that I wish I'd forever could have. I've always wanted to be able to do this. Like, think about it. Even if you only have one clone available to you, you can still send that clone off to work and while they toil away at the 9 to 5 that you hate having, you're at home playing video games, making YouTube videos, learning a new skill, just enjoying life in general. Now let's step it up a little bit. Let's say we can make two clones. Not only can you send one to work, but now you send one to go work out and train in martial arts constantly. Now, at the end of the day, not only did you enjoy yourself and do the things that you wanted to do, but you technically got a full day of training in, and you got a full day of work in, where you're earning pay in the future but you didn't actually work. This jutsu is just a cheat code to life if applied properly, but can also fail and has its limits, which adds a nice balance to everything. Also to mention, if you would use this technique, you would want to make sure that when you do dispel it to be in bed, because the original body also receives all of the fatigue from the clones. So if I have two or three clones all working all day long, I'm going to be three times as tired as I normally would be. But if you're already in bed, you just dispel the clones, pass out, wake up, rinse and repeat. Next is another entry that is very obvious and I won't have to spend too much time talking about. The Flying Raijin. 
This technique allows someone to instantly teleport to any location that they have placed a marker on, and the chakra signature of these markers never disappear, allowing the user to always return to the location they have previously marked. All I have to do is touch something, some place, or someone, and I can always be at that location the moment I need to be. 5 o'clock traffic after work? Nah, eh, I'll just teleport home. How about wanting to revisit a vacation spot that you just previously visited, but you don't have the money for a plane ticket? You guessed it, flying Raijin. Even something as simple as walking back to the other side of the house because you forgot your phone becomes irrelevant as you can immediately teleport to the phone and immediately teleport back to the location that you're currently standing. This is the ultimate jutsu in terms of travel. And a neat idea that my friend Sage of Thick Calves mentioned would be to have like a tennis ball gun or a potato gun and just put like a backpack on, fill it with potatoes or tennis balls, whatever you're using, shoot one into the air, teleport to it, and then all you have to do is as you teleport to said tennis ball and or potato, load another one, shoot it again, and then you could just fly. Make sure you go check out Sage of Thick's Cavs videos. His videos are amazing. He's one of the best Naruto power scalers out there. His channel is growing super quickly. I'm super proud of this man. Go check him out. So we've given ourselves the ability to gain multiple skills much quicker than anyone else ever could. And we can now travel to anywhere we want instantly so long as we've been there before. What else do we need? Well, on the off chance that we would need to make our own shelter, Wood style jutsu would be a top candidate. Now, I want to talk about this in two sections. The first, I'll discuss wood style as a basic application, and the second discussion will be about a specific jutsu within wood style. Wood style in general is amazing because, as we've seen from Yamato after the destruction of the Hidden Leaf, with enough training, one is able to make entire neighborhoods with relative ease. And depending on how large one's chakra pool is, it's possible that that neighborhood could be expanded into an entire town or city. Being able to make shelter, tools, and various other items for you and those around you is like a watered down version of creation of all things. And I think wood style would be an awesome power to have, one that I could use and would use specifically to help heal the world. Speaking of healing, the specific jutsu I wanted to talk about is Deep Forest Emergence. Just like the name suggests, the jutsu causes the plant life in the area to seemingly sprout and grow at such an alarming rate that a forest appears within seconds. Like previously mentioned, this could be used to create emergency shelter if need be, but more than that, this jutsu could actually help heal and save the world. So many lands across our earth are currently being destroyed, and thousands of creatures all around the world are losing their habitats, all because of deforestation. With Deep Forest Emergence, I would be able to not only instantly grow these forests back, but could also grow new forests in areas that desperately need them for their ecosystem, even just to cool down the earth by providing more shade over areas like Africa and Australia that have vast and arid deserts. Fourth on the list is arguably one of the most useful jutsu, that being the medical type. Medical ninjutsu wielded by specialists such as Tsunade or Sakura allow for medical wonders that seem almost magical in nature. Tsunade was able to heal both a leg and arm that were shattered, and was able to remove shards of bone from a spinal column without crippling the patient. In fact, her surgery was so successful that Rock Lee was able to quickly go back out onto the battlefield, with some special medicine of course. Sakurai has healed our heroes from injuries countless times, and was able to create an antidote to a poison made from a master of using and creating new poison concoctions. Not to mention towards the end of the series, she manages to keep Naruto alive by reaching into his chest and physically pumping his heart. This scene always makes my stomach turn. But it's easy to see how useful medical ninjutsu could be if applied with a strong and flexible mind. And lastly, but not leastly, the final jutsu being added to this make-believe scenario where I can do all these things and it's actually relevant to my life, is the transformation jutsu. I know that probably seems mundane, but think about how little it's used in the show and what implications it could have actually had. The show was supposed to be about ninjas, but we actually get little espionage on screen. 
a lot of it's either training or using cool looking techniques to fight. If Kakashi and Sasuke weren't part of the main cast and they weren't able to use the Sharingan to immediately detect if people are who they say they are, the transformation jutsu could have been used at so many points to cause confusion and disarray amongst whoever's on screen at that moment. Granted, the jutsu itself is pretty much only used to either impersonate as someone else, which from a moral standpoint you could potentially argue is always bad, or impersonate as an object. And honestly, there are some very devious things that you could do by transforming yourself into someone else, but by transforming yourself into an object, well, I'd probably just use it to scare my friends. See, I'm a small boy, I'm a small person, and in general, I tend to walk pretty quietly, so I already accidentally scare people around me all the time. But if I could transform into something and then hide right in front of them, well, they'd never see it coming, would they? And if they know that I'm able to transform into something, anything at will, that person, knowing I'm coming to scare them, would always be looking over their shoulder. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know down in the comment section below, and also let me know, what 5 Jutsu would you want to have? What do you think are the 5 worst Jutsu that you could possibly have? Do you have any, do you have any video ideas of things that you'd like to hear me talk about in the future? If so, let me know. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all next time.